Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Shark Evo GT helmet. Shark's range of flip over helmets just got one bigger with the arrival of this, the Evo GT. It follows the same principle as the Evo helmets that have gone before, including the Evo ES, which continues alongside this new helmet. The basic idea is that it's both a full face helmet and an open face, as the chin bar flips up and slides over to sit on the back of the shell. So you can have a full face lid for hacking along on the motorway or in bad weather, and you can have an open face helmet for in town and when it's sunny and dry. Squeezing the lever at the base of the chin bar lifts the visor slightly and starts the chin bar opening operation. Then as you lift, the visor is automatically raised out of the way and you can slide the chin bar all the way over the top of the lid. To bring it back over to the closed position, you need to pull it back slightly to release a lock, then slide it over and click it shut. If the visor is down when you try to slide the chin bar back over, then again, it will automatically retract, which creates the clearance you need for the chin bar to slide past without scratching the visor. It's the same motion as used on the Evo ES, but where that helmet is aimed at commuting riders, this Evo GT is designed for touring riders. It has a better comfort lining, improved ventilation, and a superior visor over that ES helmet. Those upgrades do come at a price premium. The Evo GT's launch RRP is £369.99 for plain colours and £389.99 for colour schemes like this Enker design, and that's 90 quid more than the Evo ES. The shell is polycarbonate and you need to bear in mind that helmets like this are usually on the heavy side. This size medium Evo GT weighs in on our scales at 1696 grams, which is a bit on the heavy side, but it's not as weighty as some flip helmets that we've weighed. Venting comes through a chin vent that rocks back and forth just under the visor and two sliding switches on top, which are really very glove friendly and easy to use. Cool air flows through the scoops and if the vents are open, it allows warm air to rise from the interior and then that's channeled back through the scoop and away. So to the visor, it's one of the main areas that helps justify the extra outlay over the cost of the basic Evo ES. It's optical class one, so the clarity is the best available and it also has a Pinlock 120 insert supplied in the box. So the anti-mist protection is much stronger than on the Evo ES, which runs an anti-fog coating. It's a max vision insert, so it covers the biggest possible area of the visor to make sure it doesn't end up impeding your vision like some smaller pin lock inserts can do. The outer visor works in tandem with an internal sun visor, which operates on this sliding mechanism on top of the shell. It's a sharp trait that they don't use an anti-fog coating on their sun visors, and it's the same with this helmet. In my opinion, they would benefit from introducing that on their helmets, especially when they cost, like this one, nearly 400 quid. Moving to the interior, it's an antimicrobial Aegis liner that's soft, it's comfortable over distance, and it's treated to stay fresh when other linings would be getting quite whiffy. There's also a touch with this helmet that I've not seen before. The Evo GT comes with a second pair of cheek pads in the box. The standard pads are 15 millimeters thick, and these accessory options are 25 millimeters thick. So if the lid is loose in its standard trim, you can replace the pads and to give your face a little bit more support. They also secure into the lid with Velcro, so they're probably the easiest cheek pads to fit that I can remember from any helmet where I've tried that. Behind those cheek pads, there are recesses for intercom speakers. There's also a cavity at the rear between the EPS and the shell where you can tuck the battery from a shark tooth intercom if you go for shark's official unit. The strap to secure the lid is a micrometric sliding buckle setup, which is in keeping with most helmets designed for touring. The approvals on the Evo GT are ECE 2205 for the road. It's rated as what they call P&J, so it's approved for use as either a full face helmet or as an open face helmet. It's not approved by the ACU for the track or for racing, though I suspect that no one in their right mind would consider this to be a track lid. It's also not yet rated by the UK government's Sharp scheme, which puts helmets through impact tests and then gives them a star rating based on the results. In the time that I wore this lid, I found it an improvement on the Evo ES model in terms of the ease of using those top vents and also the anti-mist protection on the visor with a pin lock rather than a coating. It's a shame the sun visor isn't anti-mist though. Convertible helmets like this are really handy if you're out on a trip where you're combining motorways and city riding or if when you get to the other end of your destination, you're trickling around and enjoying the sights. And this Evo GT is a good option in that market that's a bit better than Shark's alternative. 
I hope that covers everything you were hoping to find out about the Shark Evo GT. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.